Hi everybody, I'm here today to teach you all about Advent. Advent is the season to prepare ourselves to get ready for the birth of Christ at Christmas. There's something special about Advent that lets us know it's, we're in the Advent season, and that is the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath is it's special because it signifies continuous life, which has no beginning or end and symbolizes the eternity of God. And in the Advent wreath, you will see four colors on, four candles on the outside and one candle in the center. And I'm going to talk to you about the candles on the outside a little bit. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent or the four Sundays in Advent. Three of the candles are purple because the color purple is a liturgical color that signifies a time of prayer, penance, and sacrifice. And then one candle is pink and the pink candle represents joy. Miss Claudia is going to talk to you about the rest of the Advent wreath. Cool. The first candle, which is purple, symbolizes hope. It's sometimes called the prophecy candle in remembrance of the prophets, especially Isaiah, who told about the birth of Christ. The second candle, also purple, represents faith. It's called the Bethlehem candle. It's a reminder of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. The third candle is pink, and it symbolizes joy. It's called the shepherd's candle, and is pink because rose is a liturgical color for joy. On the fourth week of Advent, we light the final purple candle, and it marks the final week of prayer and penance as we wait for the birth of our Savior. The final candle, the angel's candle, symbolizes peace. It reminds us of the message of the angels, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. The white candle that Miss Pam talked about in the middle is lit on Christmas Eve. This candle is called the Christ candle and it represents the life of Christ. The color is white for purity because Christ is our sinless, pure savior. Celebrating Advent is an excellent way to prepare your mind and your heart for Christmas. And to help you along with that, we are going to be sending you this little activity to do in the mail. So check your mailbox for it. It'll be coming soon. And along with that, we're going to read you a wonderful story called The Christmas Mouse. It was snowing hard. The black cat was prowling in the backyard. The little mouse hid in the roots of the thick hedge, watching the large flakes of snow fall gently to the ground. Slowly he moved from his hiding place, looking carefully around him. There was no cat to be seen. Suddenly, the cat pounced, almost catching the tail of the little mouse with her claws. The mouse darted up the yard, keeping up the stony bank toward the big house, too frightened to look back. Then he saw it, the perfect place. The little mouse scurried inside, he crept along as far as he could, then lay still, darkness all around him. He lay in the toe of the big boot and waited. He thought of the cat looking for him, tail slowly moving, whiskers twitching. Then the mouse heard a voice. Sooty, the voice called. Come here, Sooty. You're soaking wet. The little mouse heard the black cat purring. No, you don't, said the voice firmly. I'm not having your wet paws in the house tonight. You can sleep in the shed. The cat meowed sulkily, but the mouse heard the door close firmly and the footsteps disappear. Matthew, called the voice again. You'd better bring your boots in. It's snowing hard outside. The little mouse scrambled to the toe of the boot as it swung high in the air. Then the boot fell and toppled over. The house was warm. The mouse could hear the slow tick-tock, tick-tock of a clock. The mouse crept out of the boot. The carpet was warm under his feet. He made his way along the baseboard in the dark, then pushed through a small crack. And found himself in the most beautiful place he had ever seen. The dying embers of the fire cast an orange glow around the room, and, the corner, and in the corner was a wonderful tree. The little mouse had seen so many trees before, 
but never one quite like this. Its branches were covered with delicate silver strands hanging like icicles, and at the foot of the tree lay many shapes, all covered in pictures, ribbons, and bows. The mouse moved closer and stared. At the very top of the tree, there was a beautiful figure dressed in white. Lower down, the mouse saw a star and some candles. At the bottom of the tree, something caught his eye. It was a picture of a mouse. He climbed onto the package and carefully sniffed the paper. Suddenly, the present slid off the top of the pile and the little mouse fell with it, clawing the paper to keep his balance. Mouse and present landed heavily on the floor. The mouse's claws had made large holes in the paper. He put his head inside the present and burrowed around. And now Miss Claudia is gonna finish the story for you. He ripped back the paper, nibbled through the ribbon, and stood the cover of the book. Okay, let me reread that. Okay. Thanks, Miss Pam. Let's continue on with the story. He ripped back the paper, nibbled through the ribbon, and stood on the cover of a book. He pushed his nose under the cover, then, easing his body forward, the little mouse slid under it. Down, 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 the little mouse suddenly found himself falling. He twisted and turned, head over tail, until he landed and lay still, eyes closed, body shaking. His nose twitched as he smelled the familiar smell of cows and sheep, straw and hay. The straw made his nose tickle, and he sneezed. Choo! Shh, said a voice behind him. The little mouse jumped. Shh the voice again. He opened his eyes and saw behind him a small gray mouse. The gray mouse pointed to the figures of two human beings huddled together. Wah! A small cry went up and the figures moved. The two mice watched as the man gently put his arm around the woman. Isn't he beautiful, Joseph? The woman asked, rocking the baby in her arms. The man smiled and nodded. Yes, Mary, he said, he's beautiful. The gray mouse turned to the little mouse. You're not from Bethlehem, are you? He asked. A visitor, I suppose? You'd better come with me. You've come on a very special night, said the gray mouse. God promised that it would be, and it's not over yet. Who? asked the little mouse. Why, God, of course, said the gray mouse. God who made everything, the world, the stars, the planets, the trees, the people, the cows, the dogs, the sheep, the cats, cats. Yes, cats and mice, added the gray mouse. He made everything, but you must be hungry. Have something to eat. The little mouse sank into the floor of the mouse hole and ate. And as he ate, he told the story of how he came to be there, the cat, the boot, the beautiful room, and finally, the book. The gray mouse listened, his eyes growing bigger and wider. What a story, he said. Yes, said the little mouse. I won't blame you if you don't believe me. It's all so incredible. Oh, I believe you, said the gray mouse. After all, incredible things sometimes happen. Do they? replied the little mouse, surprised. Well, said the gray mouse, what's happened here tonight is even more incredible. That baby born tonight? Well, it's a very special baby. It is God's only son, Jesus. God has given him to the world as a gift, a present. The gray mouse paused. Listen! They strained to hear muffled sounds. Then the gray mouse took the little mouse firmly by the neck and pulled him out of the hole. All around them were stamping hooves while the air was filled with sounds of bleeding sheep. Up here, shouted the gray mouse, and he pushed the little mouse to the top of a large bale of hay. The mice sat and watched the shepherds below them who were panting as if they had hurried there while everywhere there was a noise of bleeding animals. The woman 
called Mary, moved towards the manger, which she had made into a cradle. She bent down to pick up the baby. Then there was a hushed silence. One by one, the shepherds sank to their knees. The angel was right, whispered one shepherd to another. The baby is the savior of the world. He turned to Mary and Joseph. We saw an angel out in the fields, he explained. He said if we came to Bethlehem, we would find a baby in a manger. At first, we were terrified, said another. One moment, it was pitch dark. The next, the sky was filled with light, and there was a voice telling us not to be afraid. When I heard the voice, continued the first shepherd, I looked up and saw an angel, a messenger from God, and I wasn't frightened anymore. Then, in a jumble of excited words, the shepherd told their story of how from nowhere the sky was full of angels, all praising God, filling the night air with beautiful sounds. What did the angels sing? asked Mary. They sang, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth, said the shepherds. Glory to God in the highest, repeated Mary and Joseph, and peace to his people on earth. And peace to his people on earth, answered the little mouse. The world filled him with warmth and happiness. Glory to God, he squeaked again from the whole hay bale. The little mouse looked down at the lady, little baby. At that moment, he felt as if there was no one else in the world but himself and the baby lying in the manger. Jesus, God's son. Then there were sounds again. The shepherds stood up and left the stable. As each one left, he looked at the little baby as if it, he was sorry to leave him. Soon there was no one left but Mary, Joseph, and the baby, and the little mice watching from the top of the bale of hay. The dawn light gently glowed under the door. Wasn't that wonderful, whispered the gray mouse. The little mouse nodded. Now I understand, he said. The baby really is very, very special. Jesus can be God's present to everyone. The mice climbed down to the manger and peeped at the baby lying in the hay. We'd better go, said the gray mouse. Over there, do you see that small hole in the corner? The little mouse nodded and scurried towards the hole. He squeezed through, pushing as hard as he could. But instead of being outside, the little mouse felt himself being squeezed and pulled and tugged as he struggled and wriggled. He pushed until suddenly the little mouse blinked. The air around him felt cool, but he was not outside. He was sitting on top of the book in the room with the beautiful tree. He looked at the angel on the top of the tree. He recognized the shepherds in the pictures around the room. He saw the faces of children singing joyfully, and he knew what they were singing. The little mouse looked again at the open book and saw a picture of the shepherds, the sheep, and Mary and Joseph. And under the manger were two small mice, but he wasn't looking at the mice. He had his eyes fixed on the baby lying in the manger. The little mouse stared at the picture for a while. Then somewhere from the innermost part of his body came the words he had repeated that night. Glory to God in the highest, he squeaked, and peace to his people on earth. Very slowly, the little mouse left the book. He moved towards the door and taking one last look at the picture of the baby, left the room. He crawled into the boot and waited to be set free in the backyard. Thank you so much for listening to us read you the story about the Christmas mouse. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Have a happy Advent and a very Merry Christmas. Yes.